We're called Neons. Sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. Old friends, ex-lovers. Only one of us can stay in heaven. And I've got a score to settle. Speedrunning. It is a statement that I'm sure every gamer has heard at least once in their life. The idea of beating a game as quickly as possible. Some games are speedrun by people for fun, and some games even have achievements that require you to beat the game in a certain amount of time. So, what if that concept was turned into an actual game, where the player is rewarded for speedrunning it? Well, that's the very core of Neon White. Created by Ben Esposito, who you may know as the creator of Donut County and Telltale, developed by Angel Matrix, and published by Anapura and Interactive, Neon White is an FPS game where, to quote Ben, you can sacrifice cards for godlike parkour moves, more on that later. The game's story is nothing too special, in it you play as titled protagonist Neon White, or just White, a dead assassin who like other Neons is plucked from hell and brought to heaven in order to deal with a demon infestation as part of an annual contest where the winner gets to stay in heaven until it's time to do the whole thing again the following year. It's a simple premise, but it's the mystery that surrounds the story that makes it interesting to me, like the fact that White wakes up in heaven with the classic case of amnesia, and stuff like, why can't God just take care of the problem himself? The story is also filled with the kind of dialogue that you'll either love or cringe at because anime and this was written for a game that released in June of 2022. The gameplay is easily the most important aspect of Neon White. The goal is simple, kill every demon and reach the end. And along the path lies soul cards that let you use a specific firearm or discard it for a unique platforming ability. Pistols grant a double jump. SMGs grant a ground stomp, assault rifles grant a sticky grenade that you can bounce off of, shotguns grant a dash in the direction you're looking at, sniper rifles grant a dash forward, and rocket launchers let you use a grappling hook. There is also another soul card, but I'm not mentioning it since it appears during the endgame, so play the game for yourself to see it in action. It's a simple concept that makes Neon White enjoyable in the first place, as you keep replaying a stage trying to get the fastest time possible, and get the Ace Medal in each stage, as well as get your Neon rank high enough to progress through the story. When you beat a stage, you also get something called Insight, think of it as per level XP. Getting enough insight will let you race against your own ghost, reveal a hint to complete the level faster, or unlock a gift which, when collected, you can give to a certain character to unlock dialogue exchanges with them, unlock bite-sized levels called side quests, and unlock white's missing memories which, spoiling this now, are needed to get the game's true ending. Everything else, I'll let you figure out for yourself. And now we come to the part where I recommend the game or not, and I'm going to give this one my full 100% recommendation for its tight gameplay, somewhat interesting narrative, and its killer OST by drum and bass duo Machine Girl. There are other things I want to talk about, but most of them delve deep into spoiler territory, so again, play the game for yourself. And that's gonna do it for this video. I know it's been a while since I made my Hi-Fi Rush review since I've been very busy, but hopefully I can now commit to doing this. I'm still most likely going to be busy considering I've got my second year of college coming up soon as of recording the audio for this video, but time will tell. But with that, I'm Cruel Alchemist, and this has been my review of Neon White. See you in the next video.